Before continuing with the M17 sketch, I have to explain a thing or two about drawing stars on the PC. Bear with me because also this is very important. As I said in the previous video, we're going to draw all the stars from scratch on the PC because the ones you've sketched on the original drawing probably resemble more to a bunch of peas rather than stars. You might think that this is going to be as easy as simply putting some dots with a pencil tool and done, but nothing could be further from the truth. Look at this photograph of a star. Does this look like an ordinary dot to you? Contrary to popular belief, stars don't appear as infinitely small points. Due to the nature of light being a wave, point light sources, such as stars, cause diffraction patterns, like this, which become quite apparent in a telescope. So, returning to the PC, we're going to replicate this in an easy way. We're not going to use the hard pencil tool, but the softer brush to draw the stars. Then we're going to use a hardness of zero. What does hardness do? Here's a star drawn with hardness 100, and here's one with hardness zero. Which looks more realistic to you? Also, we're not going to use plain white, but we're going to select a light grey shade. Plain white looks too hard and unrealistic against a dark background, don't you agree? Now, as for size, of course we're going to use big dots for the brightest stars and smaller ones for the faintest stars. It depends on your taste and the total size of the sketch, but personally I use a brush size of 15 to 17 for the brightest stars, down to 3 for the fainter ones. I wouldn't go down to 1, because, as I said, all stars have a certain diameter in the telescope, and drawing a one pixel dot wouldn't look realistic anymore. But there's another, much subtler way to draw the fainter stars. Use ever darker shades of grey. The darker the colour that you use, the more the stars will fade into the background. I know, having to duplicate all of these dozens of little stars which you so carefully sketched at the eyepiece sounds like an incredibly tedious job, and it is. But, believe me, the result will make it worthwhile. And now you'll also see why creating all of these layers is so important. By having put the new stars on a separate layer, we can constantly cross-check the result by clicking on the little eye of the layer of the original sketch. By hiding and showing the original sketch, as if you were blinking, you'll immediately see if you've forgotten a particular star. Finally, we're going to fine-tune the fainter stars. When they all have the same colour, or if you use only three or four different shades, the sketch will look rather plain. But if every little star has a different shade, the result will look a lot more dynamic and even 3D-like. In order to obtain this, we're going to use a dodge and burn tools. Dodge to brighten a star and burn to darken it slightly until we're satisfied. Of course, in the end it will be highly unlikely that all of these little stars will have a brightness that corresponds exactly to reality. After all, sketching is more about impression and not as much about absolute science. But I can guarantee that 
this impression will look amazingly realistic and that's what it's all about. In the next video we're going to work on the object itself so stay tuned.